Yeah, Frank Grandwater here, uh, perspective of an education system in the public education system. So, um, President, uh, like Nori said, President of QP728 and National Staff. So, um, let's start with, uh, you know, what Robin touched on there, 16 years of chronic understanding, right? Like, uh, you know, it's, sorry, it's great to see everybody here, and uh, I just want to recognize DDD here, uh, former uh, Street School District uh, Education Assistant. So, uh, welcome to you. It's good to have alumni here. 25 years as an EA. Right. So uh, a lot of experience in this room just uh, with alumni, right? So, um, you know, as we all know, there's a personal rift uh, with uh, Christy Clark, right, in the BCTF. So six, that's led to 16 years of chronic underfunding. So what we really noticed as, uh, you know, Surrey Schools uh, support staff is you know, education assistance and everything is the impact it's had on the special needs uh, education piece, right? So, uh, underfunding public education overall, right? Uh, support staff positions and lack of support for students with special needs, right? Uh, huge. Uh, we like to call it a crisis state, right? Uh, for sure. Lack of support in the classroom. Colleges cannot keep up with the demand. You see districts that are essentially forming their own programs because they can't get enough education systems, right? They're, they're lowering the times, you know, uh, they're not allowing these education assistants to get full education and knowledge that they need, so because they can't keep up with the demand. Uh, low wages and hours, right? Um, this is school district uh, 36, three schools, average elementary 28 and 30, that's after school calendar list, so it's actually uh, less time than that, but you know, you're looking at bell to bell coverage, you know, that doesn't allow them education assistance any time to, you know, prep or consult with teachers. So you're just getting there and getting down to business, right? The average wage is $25 an hour, you know. Uh, again, a full time elementary education assistant makes about 32000 a year. So is that enough to support the family? No. Uh, the education assistant has always been looked at as a second supplementary income. That's not the case anymore, and, and that's part of the problem is they're not recognizing that. Um, and colleges charge anywhere from $8,000 to $16,000, right? Um, we go back to the you know, lack of, of education assistance coming out of the, the colleges, right? So um, we're going to touch on that a little bit more. Unfilled positions, failure to fill. We've got a chart coming up in a minute that is staggering and it's from the Surrey School District alone. So, um, you know, the, the biggest K-12 district in, in the province and, um, you know, education assistants, they're doing the workload about the four education assistants. They can't keep up. Um, you're, you're getting burnout from, from all this coverage, you know. There's a prime example, seven education assistance positions, one that filled at one school. Um, that means that they have to, all the other education assistants have to pick up the slack, right? Um, violent incidents are on the rise. I'll touch on that in a little bit as well. Um, increase in number of students with special needs. We'll talk about that in another slide coming up, but um, the increase in complexity of behaviors. So now that there's all these extra, you know, um, diagnoses and everything, Right? Like you're seeing more complex kids coming into the system. And that's uh, they're left with the education assistance to deal with that. Uh, numbers then and now. So in Surrey School District uh, alone, from July 2013 to present, we've hired approximately 780 EA, ABA workers for a total of approximately 1,600 plus members in these two fields. So that's 1,600 education assistants slash, uh, you know, in, in the field. Um, Common for an education assistant be working with extremely aggressive students. Uh, we're going to show a slide in a little bit where, you know, these are actual uh, pictures from school districts of, of how these education assistants are dressed. So, um, highly complex medical procedures. Um, you see it there. Injections of, of morphine, extraction of bile. You know. Uh, with the constant cut in funding, it's not uncommon for EAs to create more resources of their own. Again, uh, bell to bell coverage. How are you supposed to find time to consult with a teacher? So you're seeing that as, as the frustration. Uh, 
BAs are, are going in and they're going in on their own time and doing it. And, you know, the, the provincial collective agreement allows for no unpaid work, but they have to because they just don't have the coverage. You know, we've, uh, we went to the board and we said, BAs need, uh, the, the drive out there right now for our province wide is 35 hours for an education assistant, you know, and even that, like, is not full-time hours, but it's going to get them the ability to consult with the teachers and, and everything else, right? So, um, but that all costs money. In 16 years of chronic underfunding, where are we going to get that money? You know? uh, here's a failure to fill graph from from Surrey School District, right? So, what we've got here is uh, from September to February. This is 120 unfilled positions. So you're upwards of 140 unfilled positions. That's in any given day. Is this failure to fill permanent positions or is this replacement? On replacements. Replacements. So you, on, okay. on one day, you're upwards of 140 unfilled positions. So okay. who picks up the slack in a situation like that? The rest yeah. of the education assistants. Yeah. Who are already <laughs> overworked, you know, underpaid, at a staggering. I mean, look at that. They're, on average, if you look at this graph, you're on average about 80 a day, right? And then you look at flu season, when flu season hits, and then you've got increases there. So the number of failure to fills, when we went into our board meeting in Surrey School District, they said, oh, we were having all these shortages for education assistance. And they said, well, <coughs> we weren't really too aware of it because we had the teacher shortages as well. So we said, well, look, let's compare some numbers. And, uh, by far, the, the shortages for education assistance has surpassed the teachers, right? So. May I ask another question? And, and this has to do with my own district. We're having difficulty not only filling EA positions, which has been chronic in our district, but also now with, with other QP staff, custodians. Um, haven't heard too much about bus drivers yet. Yeah, we have buses. <laughs> we won't go there. Um, <laughs> other talk. And uh, uh, it grounds people and stuff like that. So are you guys experiencing any of that? Shortages all across the board. All across the board, board. Yeah. yeah. So these numbers you're presenting here, that's Surrey? This yeah. is Surrey, Surrey district. So I'm only speaking to okay. Surrey, but because uh, that's where I come from. Um, pretty staggering though the amounts and all other districts are, are not far behind. The EA shortage is province-wide. We sit in these K-12 President's chronic. Council meetings and, and it is chronic yeah. province-wide. You know, from Prince George to the Kootenays to, to Victoria, you know, um, it's, it's they're, they're chronic shortages. So I got a stat from the district, right, in Sri Lanka every year, on average, 100 students with autism enter the district. And that's autism only, that's not other special needs or anything else, right? And we look at the three levels of funding, and yeah. it comes down to an hourly, you know, we have physical medical needs first, uh, communication, vision, hearing, intensive behavior, uh, shifts the focus from learning support to physical care. So how many of these um, students with special needs are actually getting the learning. You know what, what you're seeing is you know shortages of a hundred plus a day. What are they? What's being taken care of first? Well, your physical, medical needs, your communication, right? So learning is so far down the list that these children aren't getting the education that they need. Uh, lack of designation. Uh, here we go. Here, EAs are now working with upwards of a thousand students. I've heard more, but I just put in put in a dozen for that, right? We heard um, where the EAs are just going from classroom to classroom, checking in on students. Oh, are you okay? Okay, on to the next classroom. Covering breaks is, you know, they're, they're not getting breaks. This is crazy. Uh, no, actually, so when the students aren't designated, there's no money for them. So the schools have to deal with them. So they just <coughs> add them on to the, to the students, right? So um, now they've got no funding for these students that need the support but yet the EA still have to watch after them. So you're seeing that. So no extra support, no extra money. Um, yeah, they're being designated. Not designated, they're being grouped in with the designators, right? So increasing the workload. Um, it's now the norm to expect undesignated students to piggyback on the students. Just on the non-designated students, in my last position in Surrey, um, I had 45 
non-designated students on my caseload that I had to uh, case manage and take a look at. And I only had a 32-hour work week, so when I broke it down, uh, there wasn't even a, an hour to give each student. That was the funding, right? So yeah, it would be great to, to do it for all, you know, their needs, but you also need the funding to support it. Otherwise, like D, you need you to fund kids according to what they need. Exactly. And, and you need to trust I could get on a rant. Yeah. You need to trust We, we can save that rant for a little right? bit later, yeah. but for sure, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, they're being piggybacked on. So, increased workloads, uh, like, like Dee was just touching on, you know. Yeah. Um, the workloads of DAs are increasing. So, uh, they're being run off their feet. What you're seeing is, um, you know, short-term disability claims are up, you know. It's, it's up huge. Long-term disability claims are up, you know. Mm -hmm. So not only are you having failed bills because you know illness and everything else, well, you know the, the short-term disabilities uh, doing that. Work through the break periods, you know, like um, like I was saying earlier, when you're bell to bell and you've got you know seven education assistants out from the school, who's going to cover the breaks? You know, and it would be great to say that the admin is dealing with it and saying, okay, you know, yeah, take your breaks, but that's not a reality, and we all know that, right? So. The, the admin is just saying, oh, just do it please, or, you know, they're, they're, the education assistants are fighting with the admin. Uh, they're not having the support they need. And it's an everyday fight for uh, myself as a president to go to human resources and say every day, you know, we're on the same team here. Why are the admin not supporting the education assistants, right? So, I mean, that, that is huge in, in itself. So, in a recent survey of 300 EAs, uh, it was found that just under 30 percent missed their coffee breaks on a regular basis, and that's just the people that responded. Out of you know 1,500 plus education assistants, you know, if you think for 330 percent are missing the break, well, what about the other 1,200 education assistants, right? They, they're there and they're not getting their breaks. So, um, and that's just the single break. Like some of them are missing extras; they're getting it put on their their timesheets and everything, but a lot of them don't claim that time. So they're putting in all this extra work, and we all know that you know, with the provincial framework agreement, there is no unpaid work. So when you know, myself as a president, I go to the employer and I say, why are you allowing this? They just ignore it because they know it's not feasible to have this. So they kind of, you know, just, they, they ignore it and they know it, but you know, we all know that it's, it's not right. So. Um, like I touched on earlier, 150 plus violent incidents a month, with over 60% of those being reported by EAs. So, you know, these EAs are getting, you know, hit, kicked, punched, grabbed, spit on, you know. Um, it's the norm, you know, when it comes time to fill out incident reports, the admin's saying, well, really, did he, did he hit you? Or, you know, they're not even recognizing near misses. So, um, that's huge in itself. I touched on a little bit earlier, uh, sick leave, LTD, you know, they are getting hit, they're, going, they're being hospitalized, you know, essentially. For retirement. And I, yeah. Actually, yeah. I, I like to make a yeah. comment too, that these things happen because our students aren't being supported to yes. the level they need to be supported. Right, and absolutely. I really <laughs> yeah, so, so what we have here, these are actual photos from, from school districts. This is what's happening because it's going so far from the, the learning in the classroom that it's the physical needs of the students. So these are actual pictures from school districts of, of education assistants of what they have to wear to work on a daily basis. You know? um, when you look at the increase in number of students with special needs, behavior concerns, the shortage of EAs coming into the system, uh, the physical nature of the job, how it's evolved, you know, um, it's so different than the level of needs that we had 15, 20 years ago yeah. where it was like like Dee can attest to, you know, where, where you were sitting with the student and actually getting some learning in. And now that's just gone so far because of the shortages. Now we're seeing, like I said, the physical needs being met and then, you know, the education just furthest from the classroom, right? So with the election of a new progressive NDP government, you know, we, we saw Rob talk about it earlier, you know. Um, turning their attention to working families and needs around child care, uh, education, right? We're optimistic that the funding announced is, is going to be uh, great for us, you know? 
they recognize the support staff. I mean, how many times did you hear Rob mention support staff in, in his comments that you would never heard of before from any other education minister, right? I never saw another So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's about time they're going to start relieving the case, right? So, thanks for your time.